right. How is everybody today? <laughs> so we're going to start off with the Viet meat, the, the fresh spring rolls first. Um, so these are really kind of like a healthy option to an egg roll. What we're going to be using is actually like a, a rice paper spring roll wrapper. So they just come in a simple sheet like that. Um, so we'll set that aside. I'm going to start off by just getting a few of our vegetables ready here. Um, I just have some fresh romaine lettuce. We're just going to chiffon out a little bit of that. A um, little bit of green cabbage to go along with that. And with these spring rolls, you can really fill them with anything you like. Um, but what I will say is once they get filled, they're not going to get cooked again. So if you have like mushrooms or something like that you want to put in there, I would cook that ahead of time. Cook that, cool it down, and then, and then add it into your filling. Um, so I've just got a couple leaves of basil right here. Um, and I'm going to grab a little bit of mint and cilantro as well. Um, so you really want to go heavy on the herbs in these. Um, it's really where a lot of your flavor is going to come from. So especially where, where they're going to get served cold, um, it tends to, to need a little bit, little bit more flavor from the things that are a little stronger. So I've got them. I've got a little bit of shredded carrot I'm going to add into that. And then what I have here is some rice noodles. Uh, so we actually don't have any power up here. So I couldn't cook all this stuff up here since we had to move. But um, very simple. These, you just pretty much dunk. You can actually run these, just run these under hot water for about 10 minutes and they'll, and they'll soften up. If you, if, you want to use, if you want to cook them like pasta, it's just about 30 seconds in the water. And then when you pull them out, just make sure you run them under cold water so that they, uh, so that they cool down quickly. Because they, they will overcook very quickly on you. And then they'll, they'll start to break up. So... All right, and then I also have a couple shrimp here that I cooked and cooled down earlier as well. Um, so the rice paper, you, um, they're very easy to use, um, but again, they can they cook very quickly. So here I just have a, a little bit of hot water out of my coffee pot. And with this, you literally want it to be in the water about two or three seconds. And you'll see, like, it, it goes from where it would have cracked earlier to be, being very pliable now. Um, and you kind of want it to still have a little bit of rigidity to it. I'll show you what happens after about 10 seconds. So at about 10 seconds, you get that. And... Those will be very difficult to wrap. It would be possible, but it's just going to make, make it a lot harder. And they'll, it'll continue to get it softer as it sits here once it's wet. So I'm going to take this, just line a few shrimp right, up, right along the bottom. And then I'm just going to mix all these herbs together so that we can go in with them at the same time. Spread them along the top of the shrimp. You want to be careful not to overstuff it. It'll, it'll, just, it'll make it a lot more difficult for you to wrap. And then just go on top, of, there we go. <laughs> on top of that with a little bit of our noodles. Um, from there, wrap the, the, take the bottom, wrap that up first. Once, and kind of pull it back so that it's nice and tight. From there, you can fold the sides in and just continue rolling it from there. So now these, uh, if you've ever made like egg rolls and stuff, you want to kind of keep them a little bit loose. These, where they're not co getting cooked again, you want to wrap them as tight as you can. It'll keep everything from falling out when, um, when you cut them. So that's actually the nicest one I made all day. <laughs> yeah, so I'll make one more of them just to show you guys again. So it's, a, it's almost the same motion as rolling like a burrito or something like that. You just want to make sure that 
as you're rolling it, the, the sides stay tucked in and you don't start losing um, all the stuff out of the side. So here we go. Got our shrimp. Back in with a little bit of our noodle and the veg. And then, again, start at the bottom, pull it back so that it's tight, fold the sides in, and continue rolling it back up. Yes? So, you could use cold water, but it's gonna, you're going to need to soak them a little longer. If you use cold water, you might need to soak them for maybe a minute or so. So, um, where when, when you're using hot water, it's kind of just easier to dunk it in there as soon as you need one. Um, and where if you were using cold water, what I would say is just throw one in cold water while you're, while you, when you start making one roll. And then by the time you finish that roll, it should be good to pull out. So... Good? You need a plate or a napkin. Get a plate. <laughs> right. Hoisin. Yeah. That's, it says a mixture of hoisin sauce. I left the fish sauce out of that. The, the, the recipe has fish sauce in it. Um, I left it out of that just, just because I, I know that we have quite a few um, vegetarians and stuff in here. So, All right. so how are they? Good, good. Look, look at that. Look at that. Do you need one without shrimp? Yeah. Okay. How many do we need without shrimp? What's that? I can make one right now. It won't be hot. It just won't have shrimp in it. Shrimp in it. Um, so these, these type, I would not make these types of wraps hot. As soon as, it, when these wraps are hot, they, um, they continue to like to break down. So if they're hot, they'll, they'll start to fall apart on you. Um, so that's a, it's a hoisin sauce. It's got a little bit of sriracha and soy in it. Um, I just I left the uh, fish sauce out of it from the recipe, just so that if, in case we had any issues with allergies. Hmm. Oh, thank you. That was for. I guess you don't need it now. <laughs> It looks like it, it's really not. Um, the, the sauce on there is, is probably about half the ingredients. And that's, um, that's as simple as just stirring, the, like measuring and stirring it together. So. What's that? Yeah, so that's for the, the edamame dumplings, which are, so it's actually very, they're very similar to something we had, I had on a menu when I was working for Wolfgang. So very similar to one of his recipes. <laughs> Yeah, I spent seven years with his fine dining group. So, no, 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 in uh, mostly Atlantic City. So, yeah. Joanne, the
Yeah. Oh, that fell apart. Well, that was. It's going quicker since I can't actually cook anything. So here's two vegetable ones. Yeah, no shrimp. Joanne, Joanne, let's make sure it's not an allergy because they were on the same cutting board. All right. So how are they? Good. All right. They're not. Uh, they're they're nice cold. They're really refreshing. Um, it's a nice like summer appetizer. So, what's that? They'll hold for a few hours. Yeah, um, I wouldn't make them the day the day before. They'll that, those wrappers like that, and that's like that's also why you, well, you're filling. That's why we really use everything raw because if you have, get that moisture in there, it's just going to keep breaking down that rice rice wrapper. So, all right. So our next we're gonna ha so next one um we have kind of a a take on a more traditional dumpling. Um, so we're going to make an edamame dumpling, but I actually added some mascarpone cheese to the recipe just to make it a little bit creamier when you're eating it. So we've got um, just some edamame that have been blanched off. I have got just one, one or two cloves of garlic in there, depending on how much you like. A tiny bit of chopped ginger. Right. Just a small squeeze of lemon right on top. Right. Got sorry. A little bit more of our basil that's gonna get picked and go in there. And I'm gonna take some of the green onions and put them in there as well. green onions in there and a tiny bit of sriracha if you like them spicy so just a tiny bit of that in there and all right so now we're just gonna pulse this a couple times and then scrape it down and then just let it run again until it's a smooth paste um, it should be fairly thick so it sh should almost be like the consistency of like a peanut butter and once you cook it and it's hot it'll it'll end up a lot softer in the inside the dumpling so we're just going to pretend this is making some noise now <laughs> there we go <laughs> all right yes so now we're going to take it out of the robo <laughs> All right, and for these, what I'm going to use is just wonton wrappers. Um, these wrappers will be a little bit easier to find. Uh, you can pretty much get these in any grocery store now. Um, they also have larger ones, that, which are the same exact thing. They, they're a tiny bit thicker. Just they'll be called egg roll wrappers. So, but there's oh H Mart. I always talk about H Mart. We we all know about H Mart. <laughs> and our that's where I, I actually. I need to go to H Mart tonight. What's that? <laughs> All right. So for these dumplings, we're just going to take um, one sheet. Again, they're they're fairly thin, and just put about half a teaspoon of filling, like right in the center. Again, you don't you don't want to overfill it very, too much, or otherwise it'll start um, bursting open on you when you cook them. So with that. So you can get, you can use just a little bit of water on your finger and wet the edge. That should, that'll help seal it. Um, if you're having issues with them sealing with just water, you can just use a beaten egg, um, a little bit of cornstarch, and water in the water will help it stick too. But if, if your wonton wrappers are fresh, um, water should be just fine. So then we're going to fold it right in half like a ravioli. So it's like, almost like a little triangle ravioli. And then what we're going to do is take these two tips and push on the bottom here and pull them together. So then you get 
a little a little <laughs> dumpling. <laughs> Did I make that look too easy? <laughs> I've made a couple. So, all right. Yeah, it's 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 similar to ravioli, um, different type of dough. So, you could, I mean, you you very well could make use this this same type of filling in a pasta, and it'd be just fine. Um, and again, feel free to like whatever you like to fill them with. You can, um, like a lot of times they're filled with ground ground beef, ground pork, um, just vegetables if if you want it to be vegetarian. So. <laughs> Oh, me too. That's okay. <laughs> so I'll just make one more of these again. So again, you just want like about a small dab of filling right in the center. Go from tip to tip. Seal that. And again, like this part, you, you want to make sure you press the sides very well. Otherwise, they will start to break apart when you cook them. And again, just push push the bottom up and catch the two 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 ends of it together. Just like that. <laughs> I can come around. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> so, okay. <laughs> and again, I don't have power for my steamer, but so you can just steam these for six, six to eight minutes. Um, or if you want them crispier, you can just in a pan with hot oil. What I would do is start them in a pan with hot oil until they start to turn brown on the bottom. Um, pour a little bit of water in that and put a lid on it just to finish cooking them through. And that'll give you almost like a pot sticker that you would get, like that, that texture. So. Um, you get, you, so everything in here is cooked, so nothing's raw, so you don't have to worry about um, anything being served raw. So it really, as soon as it's hot, it's done. So, and you'll, you'll also see the, the color of the dough will, cha will change. It'll get almost transparent. So it'll go, go from being like solid to where you can almost see through it. So, yes? If you're putting meat inside, do you need to cook the meat in advance? Yes. Yeah, I would make sure that whatever you have in it is cooked ahead of time, but make sure that it's cold when you're filling it. So if you wanted to put meat, put like ground beef in, I would like cook the ground beef off, mix that into the into the filling and the cheese, um, and then cool that down, and then fill it. So because if you start filling these with a hot filling, it'll it'll soften up the wrapper and it'll just start they'll start breaking on you. Um, yeah, it's just it's it's a simple flour water. Um, let me see. Yeah, that's really all it is—is is flour, flour, and water. Yeah, they were all steamed. So, how I, I was actually having issues with my steamer, though. So, yeah. <laughs> I'm sure. Actually, I think it was me. <laughs> Very well, could have been me. I didn't check. So, mm -hmm. how are they? Good. All right. Thank you. From yeah, absolutely. <laughs> All right, we got through that quick where I couldn't cook anything. <laughs> no, no, no. This dough is not cooked. It, 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 it yeah, it cooks very quickly. Um, just any filling, it. it by the time you were to get, get the internal temperature of that filling, if you were using a, putting a raw like meat in there, um, the dough on the outside would be would be really overcooked and fall apart. You, I would not put a dry seaweed in there. Um, like so, the the spring rolls, I, I would put like a, if you had like a wakame salad or something, that would be really good in there. Like the same type of salad you would get from. Like a sushi restaurant, yeah, exactly. So, well, they have they have probably like a dozen different kinds of seaweed salads that, that you can get. Um, I know H Mart has like a, it's almost like 
Whole Foods Olive Bar, but it's all different kinds of seaweed. So. Are they all dry? No, no, no. They're all wet. So they're all they're all fresh seaweeds and stuff like that. And I see there's a sushi restaurant right around the corner from here, um, Yasaku. It's Yasaku. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, because I was going to say, I know Yusaku, they have a really good, if you go there and get their seaweed salad, it's like five or six different kinds on the same plate. It's really good. So, 